Atrial fibrillation is actually one of the hardest things for us to deal with because there's no cookie cutter recipe for every single patient. Atrial fibrillation is an irregular heart rhythm where the top chambers of the heart are beating chaotically. The symptoms of AFib are all over the board. There's a number of patients who are dramatically affected, they are overwhelmed by it, it's incapacitating, they know the second it started, and they often need to go to the emergency room immediately. I've had three episodes of where I actually passed out. I didn't have any energy, and I felt bad, you know, just... There's another group of patients which is very difficult, and those are the patients who are fatigued, they're short of breath, they can't really put their finger on it, but they just don't feel quite right. Uh, their spouses usually say that they get home from work and they just lay down and they can't do anything for the rest of the day. And they don't really notice the palpitation, the heart beating in their chest. They don't have any chest pain associated with it. They're not severely overcome by it, but it really has a dramatic effect on the quality of life. I just couldn't do hardly anything. I'd get up and walk across the floor and I'd be out of breath. And and those are the people that sometimes we have to spend the greatest amount of time with teasing out whether or not their episodes of atrial fibrillation are causing their symptoms or if there's some underlying disease. A few misconceptions here. We've looked into this extensively and patients may have been told, oh, if I don't feel it, it's not a problem. Or, well, I only have a few hours a week of AFib, that's okay. And actually the risk for stroke which is really the primary concern with atrial fib, is found to be the same, whether the patient is having a few hours of AFib or are constantly in AFib. Every time we go back and look at the risk for stroke in AFib, we can't separate it based on how much AFib or if the patient feels their AFib, but rather based on some risk factors for stroke in AFib, namely high blood pressure, diabetes, congestive heart failure, increased age, or prior stroke or TIA. And that ends up being the most important thing to sort out in someone who has the diagnosis of AFib, more importantly than if they're in AFib all the time or if they're feeling their AFib. Treatment of atrial fibrillation is focused on two goals. Number one, preventing stroke, and number two, addressing any patient symptoms. To protect patients against stroke, we usually prescribe blood thinners such as warfarin or one of the newer um, blood thinning agents. Um, to address patient symptoms, we have two basic strategies. One is what we call rate control where we leave the patient in atrial fibrillation and control the heart rate. Um, the other strategy is what we call rhythm control where we try to uh, restore and maintain normal sinus rhythm. Um, rhythm control may involve uh, electrical cardioversion where we shock the patient back into rhythm, um, use of antiarrhythmic drugs, or catheter ablation address those symptoms. M for most patients, we try medication first before we proceed with, with catheter ablation. For younger patients who are otherwise very healthy and who have a normal heart, we will offer um, uh, ablation as a first-line therapy.